loaded both ways. Save them and move them. Oh, yeah, because I had two different questions on two different sites, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Hey, y'all. It's Sean and... Jenny. Hi. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, so, uh, we're in our schoolie. Uh, we've done quite a bit, haven't we? We built walls and built a bed, uh, as you guys have seen some of um, through Instagram, but this is for YouTube. So uh, what we're doing is today we are covering wiring. We're going to start wiring, um, and Jen has never done wiring before. So uh, what is going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and do a real quick explanation of what's going on. Overview. Overview of what we're doing and uh, uh, a visual reference as well. Um, throughout the series, you guys will learn t basic 12 volt wiring. Um, you'll learn how to wire your 110 into your schoolie or your conversion bus. We'll get it, we'll gain a basic understanding of circuits and, and how, to, how to build a circuit. So, 12 volt is best or all electrical is best described as more or less a hose um, as long as there is a way for water to travel from one point to another water will travel and then it'll stop if it's clogged off go depending on what kind of uh, uh, fitting you have on your hose depends on what happens to water same thing with electrical so electrical moves from point A to point B and it stops at any interruption in between on the bus, um, we know we have headlights, we have turn signals, we have marker lights. What are the marker lights? Like the top yeah. above the bus thing? Uh -huh. Like up here in front of the bus. Okay, what else do we got? We have stop lights and we have flashers. Those are the known circuits that are on the bus from the factory. There's, there's not much else left that would be on the chassis. So we'll call these our known variables, which would be our chassis wiring. Now, I always like to start with my known variables on everything. So, and then you work from what you have forward. Now, easiest way for to do that is well, we don't have to worry about the headlights because those are already wired. Those weren't taken apart. On the tail lights, we have a upper red, a lower red, uh, lower red, and upper yellow or amber, and a lower amber. On the opposite side, we have a upper amber, a lower amber, an upper red, and another lower red. Oops. We'll be adding in turn signals and tail lights on the bumper. So these will be, we'll just put a plus on because this is what we're adding in. And that covers the red and amber covers, or the, yeah, the red and amber covers our tail lights and our marker lights. And our turn signals, and our stoplights, and our flashers. So now we have to know get now we have to wire it. Front of the bus, you'll have your pigtail. So your pigtail will have however many wires. Our pigtail colors are red, blue, yellow, green, brown. I thought it looked red, dark red, maroon. Red is our running lights and tail lights, marker lights. So red would be our tail lights, 
blue is our reverse light yellow is right turn greens left turn and brown is stop so we know we have the ambers are our turn signals red is tail light there's our circuit so you got turn turn tail stop in our case our wiring harness is going to come up from the front side of the bus we're just going to do a little swiggly line right here denoting that there's wires coming from back this way the red wire which will come up it'll split off and it will go down and feed this tail light and it'll go up so that would be our red wire I could get into the symbols on light bulbs and all that stuff, but we're not going to do all that. Then we have a blue wire, which is our reverse light. That's going to come up. And that's going to be that circuit. Yellow or amber. Amber will come up. And we have green. And feed the left turn. And brown, which is stop, will come and it'll grab here and up. So that's all of our terminations. So it's all fed from the front. We know what colors they are. And this is our, our plan. This is how we're going to do it. Jen's going to be doing all that for you. And I'll be guiding her along. Um, we are starting to get hot in here. So we're going to hurry up and get started. And get as much done as we can as quickly as possible. So what we have here is what's left of the factory loom. It was cut by the people that started the bus before we bought it. And with moving the butt, the cap forward, we had to uh, remove the loom anyway. Ben's going to go ahead and she's going to clip that wire up there with that clip so that it stays steady. And she's going to stretch it out pretty much the length of the bus because that's as long as the wire is. Yeah, it's a reverse wire. wire. So yeah, she's gonna get that all nice and stretched out and detangled so that she doesn't have to fight with it. Right. Now that she's got all this pulled, she's gonna come back forward and she's gonna start at the beginning by the plug with some electrical tape. And she's gonna kind of wrap the loom with some electrical real quick just kind of help with managing the wires so it's not so much spaghetti now one of the tricks of the trade is you always could take a drill and put the wires inside the drill truck chuck and then run the drill it'll twist all the wires together make them nice and tight and then you can wrap it but seeing as we're going to be doing so many interruptions in the loom i think it'd just be better if we do it this way now you gotta pull that pull that tape tight. Don't pull so much of it. If you keep the tape up against your loom, the tape will hold itself tight. So go ahead and yeah, start your wrap like that and pull it tight as you're as it's as it's pulling it off of itself. So if you take this and you hold on to it yeah. and pull it <coughs> as you're wrapping it, just the, the whole entire roll. Yeah, I thought I was doing that. I, I don't know. I was just that's <laughs> what I was trying to say is, is see how I'm pulling on it and it's yeah. getting nice and tight right here. It's pulling all the wires nice and tight. Yeah. There, that, that's what we're after. All right, that's probably good. So you probably roll it back on itself a little bit. Okay. Then what? Break it off. Okay. And 
disconnect it from the clamp. We're going to run it down the channel that we want to run it in. Okay. Now, not everybody's going to have their bus set up the same way our bus is or on... Um, you know, so you'll you'll have to hide your wires according to what works out best for you. You're actually going to want to push that from this end that way. What do you mean you're going to push from that end? Because this end is the end that has to be over there. I got it. Instead of trying to push spaghetti through yeah. a through a hole, we're going to push a solid I was thinking noodle. this end was going to be there. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was just to stretch out the wires and get them untangled. What do you want me to do with this? It's right, it's fine right there. Here where you want to put it. Alright. And you're going to push it along those water lines. Yep. So kind of, you might have to wiggle it back and forth. Wiggle it and jiggle it. Okay. It's not going to be smooth. Yeah, it could be. You never know. Sometimes it might fight you. Sometimes it might decide it wants to just cooperate. It decided it wanted to cooperate. So over here is your pigtail. Give yourself a little bit of a service lead so we don't get any crimp, crimp wires. There you go. Perfect. That's fine. Alright, so off camera what we did really quick is we made ourselves a service loop over here and then we went ahead and made this little pigtail. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut all these connectors off that somebody else has done. I don't like tying into other people's wiring. So I'm going to cut these guys down right here. Like that. Strip. About that far is good enough. Well, about like that. Okay. Get them guys. A real quick one two like that right. now this one since it's only a single wire and we're using the yellow connectors I like to strip these back a little bit further than I would have if they were doubled up about twice the distance twist and fold the wire over Now that gives us that gives us something for this large hole that's inside this. So that hole's huge, and since it's only one wire that's filling that one that big of a hole, if you double the wire over, it's the same as having two wires. All right. So, but they have to touch, right? They don't have to. Well, there's metal inside of here. Okay. If you look inside, see yeah, see the I metal. See it. Uh -huh. All right. So that that is what makes your connection. Now I like to load the tool first. So the back one is large fittings that don't have uh, insulation. Okay. And then this with the bigger holes are for the, for the uh, fittings that do have insulation, the crimps that do have insulation. Good, nice, tight crimp. Give her a little pull. See if she's, make sure she's good. Load it again. Turn it in there. Get a nice good tight crimp. Double check, make sure she's good. That connection's made. Cool. Next connection is these brown wires, brown and white. Okay. 
Same as before. I don't like using these guys right here because there's no real crimp that happens and so many times I have crimped a wire, pulled on it, and lost the crimp because it didn't crimp. I like these guys because you're almost guaranteed to get a good tight crimp almost every time. Ideally you'd want to solder all this stuff together, shrink wrap everything, shrink tube everything, on um, just to make sure that you've got like, you know, the ultimate best connections um if this was a race rig or something like that i would definitely be soldering and stuff but this is just a bus and then we know that yellow is the turn signal so we grab that and bring it over to about right here Now the only reason why we're putting a loop in this yellow is because we're going to run a turn signal up there as well. So it'll be a blue, a blue out, uh, um, uh, crimp instead of the yellow. Easy way to tell the difference between a multi-function light and a single function light like a turn signal and a multi-function function light would be a light that does tail lights and brake lights or tail lights and brake lights and turn signals so this has got a three wire that means it's multi-function two wire single function you get a ground and a single input this while it only has the, the three wires the input for the running lights and the input for stopping lights. Some vehicles, the circuit also for the stoplight also runs the, the uh, turn signal. We found that there's a red and a brown solid and there's a red and brown stripe. Go to the two different sides of the vehicles, probably because originally when they wired it up, these were doubled as flashers as well as the running lights. I don't know, we'll find out when we get all done if I'm right or not. <laughs> and that is a demonstration on how it's done. When we come back, Jen will finish off the last of the tilt back into the wiring, and uh, we'll move on to laying out and wiring the uh, interior. interior lights.